Hi folks and welcome to Open Analysis Live. So today we're going to talk about what's going on under the hood of your debugger when you're debugging a target. Have you ever wondered what's actually going on? How is the debugger communicating with the target process when you're debugging it? Well, stick around and we will explain it. But before we do, just a quick shill for our Patreon. The clip that you're about to see comes from one of the tutorials we released on Patreon. It's a seven part series on building a debugger from scratch. We build it in Python and give you all the details on what's happening under the hood while you're building it. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, I encourage you to go check it out. Hope to see you there. Without further ado, let's get on with it. So the first thing we want to do here is talk about how debugging works in Windows. So Microsoft likes to call this event-driven debugging, which basically means that your debugger is going to be receiving events from the kernel as your target process is executing. So we're going to go through what those events are in a minute, but basically the overview here is that you'll have a debugger process, a target process, and it is in fact the Windows kernel that is responsible for taking events from the target process and sending them to your debugger. Now, each time one of those events is sent from the target process to the debugger, threads in the target process are frozen. So this gives you a chance to interact with the target process in a frozen state for each event. And then once you've handled the event, you can tell the kernel, okay, go ahead and continue execution of the target process. So that's just an overview of how this all works. Now that you've attached to a process or started a process and you've registered yourself as a debugger with the kernel for that target process, you can start receiving events from the process. Now, the way this is done is actually very simple. It's just two API calls, two Windows API calls. The first one is wait for debug event. And this is a blocking API call. So when you call this, it will actually wait until it receives an event from the kernel from that target process. Basically, you call wait for debug event and then receive the events from the kernel. Once you've received an event, you can process it. And then to tell the kernel to continue execution of the target, you call another API call called continue debug event. So you call continue debug event with the status of how you've handled that event. And that'll tell the kernel that it can then continue execution of the target. Now the event that is returned from wait for debug event is very important. In fact, that's the core of how the debugger works. So here I've put up the struct for you guys to take a look at. And some of the most important information you can see is at the beginning of the struct here. So you have the event code, which tells you what type of event it is. You have the process ID in case your debugger is debugging multiple processes and you have the thread ID, and that's the thread that actually triggered the event. So those are the most important pieces of information. Then you have a union, which has a bunch of different structs depending on the type of event that has been triggered. So let's talk about these types of events. And as we go through the modules, we will dig into each individual event. So here's a list of all the events that you can receive. I'll just go through them quickly. You can have an exception debug event and an exception debug event covers all kinds of different exceptions. It also includes breakpoints, both hardware and software. So those are all covered under the exception event. You have two special WoW 64 events, which I'll talk about in a minute, but basically these only occur when you have a 64 bit debugger debugging a WoW 64 32-bit process. You have a create process debug event. So this happens when the target process is first created. You have a create thread event for any thread that's created in the target process. Exit thread, obviously, from when the exit. You have a load DLL event and an unload DLL event, again, for when the target process is loading DLLs and unloading them. You have an output debug string, which is, of course, for when the target outputs a debug string. You can capture that in your debugger. You have an exit process debug event, which is when the target is gracefully exiting. And you have a rip event for when it has ungracefully exited. So these are all the events. And let's not worry about getting too deep into them right now, because we're going to go through each one of these in detail in the following modules. Now, just to bring this all back to the debugger and show you guys how all this works, if you go into X64 debug and you go to options and then preferences, there's a tab here called events and all of these events should look familiar to you. These are all the different events that the debugger can receive from the target. And of course you can enable or disable them as you see fit. So hopefully that clears up how this actually works under the hood when you're debugging a target. I hope you enjoyed that. And like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, there is more of that on our Patreon. If you enjoy this kind of stuff, go check it out. Hopefully we see you there. And remember, keep exposing the canvas behind the malware. Stay curious, guys.